So dual isolated batteries is a concept where you have more than one battery in your vehicle where you would dedicate one battery just as a starter battery for starting the engine and then you would have a second battery to run any type of household items, uh, radios, refrigerators, heaters, um, inverters for chargers, you know, that kind of thing. So that lets you use electricity in your vehicle uh, without having to worry about draining your starter battery and not be able, you know, to start your vehicle. So uh, my Toyota Tundra right here, it's a 2024 Toyota Tundra that I just bought. And uh, I'm installing uh, dual isolated batteries right now to run my angle refrigerator in the back. And this is a compressor fridge. And I have the same setup in my Jeep and in my uh, Toyota 4Runner. And uh, this fridge runs on 12 volts, 24 volts, and also 120 volts. And the way I currently have it mounted, I just have it strapped to my bed here. Uh, there's a reason for it because my tonneau cover is in the way, so I can't really mount it any other way. Uh, I have a lithium iron phosphate battery here. This is a 24 volt battery. And I'm going to use my 24 volt battery to run my fridge. Um, and I gotta run some wires here. And I'm gonna show you how it's done. So dual isolated batteries, uh, there are several ways you can wire this. Uh, in the old days, you would just use a, uh, a switch, a, uh, a relay switch. So when you turn the ignition off, the two batteries would be isolated. And then when you turn the ignition on, they would immediately uh, link together and, and form, you know, one battery. Of course, in my case, I can't do it because the truck is 12 volts uh, lead acid for the starter battery right here. Let me show you. And this is a hybrid version. So the starter battery is uh, behind the driver's seat. And this is just a conventional lead acid battery. So I got to run some wires of the lead acid battery to a charge controller. And these are the charge controllers that I use. Uh, and again, I have these in my Jeep and in my Toyota 4Runner. Uh, I'm using Victron premium components. Uh, yes, they are expensive, but they are uh, really good components and uh, I, I really like them. So let me see what, uh, let me show you what these numbers mean. So this particular charge controller is a 122415. So what it means is that on the input side, you can hook it up to a 12 volt battery. Specifically, the input is 8 to 17 volts. And then on the output side, since I'm running a 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, of course, I need to run a DC-DC conversion from 12 volts to 24 volts. So the output here means 24 volts and the 15 means 15 amps at 24 volts. So the output here is 18 to 30 volts, uh, which is perfect. And of course, everything is Bluetooth. You can uh, program it using, uh, using your smartphone or your tablet. And uh, these controllers are really nice. Um, they, they are somewhat heavy. And let me tell you about uh, wire gauge here. So this is my 24 volt wire and it's gonna run run all the way to, to this controller. So this 24 volt wire, 15 amps, is a 12 gauge wire because 12 gauge, I can run 20 amps through a 12 gauge wire without it getting hot at all. On the input side, of course, if you have 15 amps at 24 volts, how many amps are you drawing at 12 volts? Well, twice that, right? So uh, on the input side, I need to run 10 gauge copper wire and I have high quality 10 gauge copper wire because I'm drawing 30 amps. So the input side will always see 30 amps and the, you, you can't really run it on a 12 gauge wire. It's just too small. So, so the minimum is 10 gauge. It's a really short run. It just goes under the seat, you know, right into my battery. And I have a 35 amp fuse hooked to it. I have heavy duty copper crimped connectors to the battery. So I'm gonna hook this up as soon as the charge controller uh, is, is installed. The location of the charge controller will be behind the seat, like I have in uh, my other vehicles, and uh, it, works out, uh, it works out fairly well. So let me hook this up real quick and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here you see on the right-hand side, this is my 10 gauge wire. I currently have the ends stripped off. Uh, this is a high quality copper wire to be able to carry 30 amps continuously on this short run. 
And on the left hand side, uh, this is uh, the wire I'm going to use for the 24 volt side of it. Uh, it's only going to, to pull 15 amps. So it's, it's plenty good. And uh, full transparency, this is not even copper wire. This is copper clad aluminum because I'm cheap, but I use it everywhere and uh, it'll be just fine. So do not solder the end. You might be tempted to solder these. Uh, it's, it's just not giving you the right contact area. So you just want to leave them stranded as it is and use these uh, heavy duty terminals in, in the Victron charge controller here uh, to get you know the, the most c uh, contact surface area you know to carry at least you know the 30 amps you need you need all the surface area you can get uh, so it doesn't get hot so this is what it currently looks like uh, the input 12 volt input and 24 volt output uh, are connected to this charge controller and uh, what I do is I just gonna shove it under the seat like so that that's really all I need uh, there's plenty of heat sink behind it for heat dissipation and again I'm using the same setup in two of my other vehicles and I've I've had it for years and it works just great and then the wires they go underneath this uh, weather mat and they go here into into the inner uh, covers here and then I'm gonna run them back this is my 12 volt wire that goes then to the battery that needs to be connected still. That's the last thing I'm going to do. And then the 24 volt version goes back and I'm going through the firewall and I'm coming on, out underneath. Let me just show you real quick where I am. And I'm coming out uh, behind, behind the firewall and then I'm gonna run it back to the bed and uh, I need to put this uh, conduit on it to make sure it's it's not shaving through so that's going to be my my next step so i'm going to see how long this 24 volt wire has to be it's going to go underneath the truck and i think i'm going to pop it out right here in this corner uh, right behind the wheel well i'm going to drill a hole and i'm going to see how how i can best uh, mount this and then it can go directly to the 24 volt battery charge the battery see currently I'm at 26 volts on this battery at this state of charge and uh, it'll be good so I'll check back with you so before you run this wire through the conduit what I do is I, I cut a little I cut the uh, the sharp edges off with snippers so it actually feeds better through the conduit and doesn't get snagged everywhere so this is what it looks like underneath the truck uh, this is a conduit right here where my middle finger is. Uh, it goes behind the shock. It is secured with zip ties on the frame rail between the bed and the frame rail. Secured here one more time and then this is, this is the end I currently have right here. So I'm going to drill a hole in the corner of the bed uh, right, around, right around the very edge of the bed. So the conduit has to fit through it. I, I do want the conduit to fit through. I'm not going to put a um, a grommet there or a, a wire pass through. Uh, I'm just going to keep the uh, conduit maybe about uh, three quarters of an inch or one inch above the bed. I have a tonneau cover on it, so I, I don't think there's going to be any water going in. And I'll probably seal it with silicone between uh, the conductor and the conduit so that there's no water getting in ever. And even if it if there's water getting in, it doesn't really matter. So uh, in order to drill this hole, uh, I'm gonna pre-drill uh, with a small drill and then I'm gonna uh, extend it out to half an inch. That's the largest drill that I currently have here in my garage. I, I don't wanna go to the workshop. And then I use a step bit uh, just to open up the hole enough and um, just to give you an idea, the tonneau cover actually has the same concept. This is a drainage tube from the tonneau cover channel and it, it actually goes through the factory holes in the bed that I just opened up with a step bit. This is the same conduit that I used for uh, this wiring right here.
So this is what it currently looks like. I gotta vacuum this off and then probably push it down just a hair more like so. Uh, maybe fill this here with some silicone. And then uh, the length is actually just about perfect. I'm gonna put Anderson connectors on it. Uh, 30 amp Anderson and I can plug it right into my battery here because all my batteries have Anderson connectors uh, hooked up to it. And 30 amp Andersons. It's just about perfect. So let's do that. So when you use Anderson power poles, uh, the positive goes to the right and the lip faces up. That's uh, the way it's supposed to be. And of course you want to crimp them for automotive applications. Uh, do not solder them uh, due to vibrations and issues you can possibly have. Uh, use a good quality crimping tool and don't cheap out on these Anderson power pole connectors. Uh, I leave a link in the description for you. Uh, don't don't buy the knockoffs off of eBay. Buy the real Anderson power poles. You, you pay a little bit more, but but they are really good and they save you a bunch of trouble. Let me see if this captures for you. Um, so as you look at it, positive on the right, lip facing up. And then if you look at the insulators here, there's also a little metal piece clip in it. So that also goes up, that hooks behind this little lip here. So align it, press it in, make sure it clicks and give it a good pull. Again, the cheap ones you're gonna have trouble with, uh, they, they don't really stay put. So uh, these two, uh, same on the negative side, there's a metal clip in here. So just push them in, click, and then the last thing you do is you push these two Anderson connectors together. There's a tongue and groove set up. There we go. You're good to go. So now I have to connect three Andersons together. So you need one of these distribution blocks. And uh, the, these are made by PowerWorks. Again, I leave a link in the description for you. Uh, they are not cheap, but they are good quality. So I, I need to connect the battery the fridge and my newly established 24 volt uh, power uh, input from the charge controller all uh, with this uh, power block. So let me do that. So everything is now connected, the battery, uh, the fridge and also the charging cable. Uh, this needs to be secured here uh, probably with a zip tie or, or double sided tape or something. Uh, this is the uh, power cord from the fridge which is a little too long. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like. Time to connect the terminals. Yeah, just snapping on these trim pieces again. So let me fire up my Victron Connect app. It wants to use Bluetooth. Turn that on. Here we go. So I have two smart, uh, three smart chargers. Uh, you can see the Orion smart charger in my Forerunner. You can see one uh, at the bottom. It's in my Jeep JL, and then I have the new one now. Uh, that's in my uh, Toyota Tundra, and you can see the voltages. Uh, so uh, let's go into. Oh, here's, here we go. Orion smart. Tundra, I already renamed it. Uh, the signal is not very strong. That's interesting. I wonder why that is. So let's, let's just go in here. It has a really weak signal. Let me get a little bit closer to it. Here we go. There we go. Let me open the door. Okay. It's going to sit here in my Tundra. Okay, so what you're looking at right now, you can see currently it's not charging. Uh, the voltage is 12.4, which is the voltage of the vehicle battery. Uh, let's go into the settings, upper right corner. Function, you can choose between charger or power supply. Of course, I want to use it currently as a charger. And then battery settings. Okay, here it gets interesting. So I have a factory default uh, smart lithium, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, those are the voltages that I want. <clears throat> it says uh, charger enabled. So that's uh, currently selected. And then the voltages are currently grayed out. Okay, it's a 24 volt system. I have it set up as a 24 volt system. 
and you can see the absorption voltage at uh, 28.4 volts and you can see the float voltage at 27 volts and you can see bulk time uh, if you just choose a factory uh, preset you really don't have to worry about it just just go with it uh, you can also choose an expert mode or you can do your own profile if you use uh, lithium cobalt oxide batteries or if you use another lead acid battery uh, or a, uh, a gel cell or, or whatever whatever your flavor of battery is right and of course um, yeah this charge controller uh, can can handle all the voltages but it is specifically designed for a 24 volt system of course you can also get them in 12 12 18 12 12 30 24 12 30 you know all kinds of voltages victron victron makes them all so uh so let's see i think the only thing we need to do is yeah let's look at uh battery settings we just went in okay engine shutdown detection let's go in there because i'm pretty sure this is a smart alternator so you see on the alternator type it says smart alternator uh, selected let's just go in here what our options are there's a regular alternator and pretty much all new cars uh, just around 2019 2020 is when they all change to the smart alternator which means it puts out a lot less voltage during normal operation uh, for fuel efficiency and emissions reduction and, and then you can also use user defined actually I use that on my Tundra because I have a solar panel that's uh, charging this thing too. So in this case, smart alternator is good. Just say okay. And then you can see all the voltages, you know, 14 volts, you know, to, to start. And then uh, and then all the other voltages right here. So I'm not going to get into it too much. And at the bottom, you can see the current voltages uh, we have. Input voltage, lockout. Oh, th those are the ones where the... Uh, uh, charge controller then shuts down. So let's see what else we have. Yeah, that's it. So the only thing to do is I should charge this, uh, fire up my Tundra, and it's a hybrid. So let's see, let's see what it does. And let's just keep watching the screen here. Let me just push this button. Okay, Tundra, uh, Tundra started up. Okay, here we go. 14.2 volts. Bulk charge, here you go. So now at the bottom, let me turn the music off. At the bottom you can see the current voltage of my 24 volt system. So bulk charge means it's it's putting a full 15 amps into this battery and the voltage is currently at 27.9, which is, which is great. And uh, this goes up until you hit uh, uh, absorption of float voltage and then uh, the amperage will taper off but as long as it says bulk charge, you're charging with the full amperage that, that is uh, currently uh, selected, in this case, 15 amps. So on the input side, the 13.5 volts, of course, you're drawing a full 30 amps, just slightly below 30 amps at this time. And uh, yeah, system works. So if I turn the engine off, it should detect that the engine was turned off. See the voltage drops 12.0 volts, 11.9, because it's still it's still charging. See now it's off. So I shut my charge controller off. Now both batteries are isolated, hence the dual isolated battery nomenclature. So now I can run my fridge until the lithium battery dies and my truck would still start up. And then it would just charge the battery again. So pretty slick setup. I hope you guys like it and uh, see you guys on the next one.